All right, so hello and welcome to Science Sunday! Uh, I am your host, Annie Wilson, and we are going to work on uh, UGC 2885, or the Vera Rubin Galaxy. We've been working on this for a little bit now. Um, it is, well, I guess the best thing for me to do is just to show you what it is for those that are new. So, let me find it. Um, feel free to ask me questions while I'm doing this. I will do my best to answer. <coughs> my dogs are all like, you're talking. I have trained my dogs for the wrong thing. Obviously, they miss their calling in life. Anyways, so this is the UGC 28, um, 85. This is the Vera Rubin Galaxy. And if it looks weird, as in not in color, you're right. Uh, telescope data comes down from the Hubble. Data comes from down from the Hubble in black and white. And they take different filters. So let me turn off all the other quadrants so we can just quickly go through the different images. So uh, typically they capture at least two uh, images of an object. And one is with one filter and one is with another. This one used a whole whopping three filters. So, uh, each one of these images, like this was taken with the filter, this was taken with a different filter, and that was taken with even an even different filter. So I processed these in Fitz Liberator all the same. And right now the goal is to just kind of line these up to show you what I started with. Oh, this is... So this is what I started with ages ago. And I actually do need to update the, the save file. So this is what we started with. And uh, I think we can all agree that that looks better. It's not pretty yet, but I think it's important to keep track of progress. So it is no longer palindrome day. That was amusing. So I'll save, it, save a copy. And I'll pull chat back up because I'm sure chat's going. So hold up, what are those? Um, what are these? This is a galaxy. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but these are all images that were taken by the Hubble. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. Look at me messing up. But this is a series of, what, 12 images taken by the Hubble? Yeah, I am trying to take this, this black and white image and let's see if I can pull up a color image. UGC 2885, Wikipedia. And boom. So here is a colorized picture of UGC 2885 done by a professional. And something that you'll notice is that um, mine has this weird artifact right here. And that is an artifact on the telescope. So they managed to get rid of that. Um, they literally processed it out somewhere and like this is a star in the foreground that's a star in the foreground this is probably a galaxy in the background or in the foreground because it's so fuzzy um but yeah this is what the professionals put out and this was this image was released at the AAS that's American Ast Astronomical Society meeting they meet twice a year this was uh, put out at the winter meeting in Honolulu, like a month ago. So yeah, where is it? This is that, That that is what we are trying to do. Um, I hope that answered your question. So um, yeah, we are totally taking Hubble images black and white Hubble images and turning them into uh, something pretty. So I still need to align 
the bottom right quadrant. And for those of you that don't know, I get my left and right mixed up. So if I'm like sitting and thinking about something before I say it, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, this bottom right is just not quite. And I'm actually, right now I'm moving all three images together. But in a second, I'm gonna go image by image by image to a uh, thing. Is the Hubble Space Telescope the single most productive scientific instrument ever? I'm actually not sure. I really don't know. Um, I really don't know. All right, so we don't need the top left for this one. So I'll turn off the top left. And we're gonna turn off on the top right. We're gonna turn off that. And on the bottom left, we're gonna turn off these and that. So we're gonna change the opacity. Not quite that much. I'm reducing the opacity essentially so I can see where things line up. And apparently I don't need to do it all that much this time. And then I will do it one more time. Over, I turned off all these other ones, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure what's going on over here. Oh, bottom right, bottom left. Oh, because this one is still set at 100%. Hmm. Not sure what's up with this strip. No, I was right. Oh, that's where they overlap. Okay, I see. I see, that makes so much more sense. Um, Limpurple's like, it doesn't have, t it doesn't even have toilets. Oh my, oh my. A lot of people are gonna be like, I don't understand what that, what that is. I, I have a thing for space toilets. Like a legit thing for space toilets. I really like space toilets, probably more than I should. All right. So now we need to find places to line this up. And this one's not so straightforward because there's no bright stars for me to, to do. It looks like there's something here. It looks like this and this should maybe line up and that and that should line up. But that leaves me, this leaves this part off. And there's not, oh, and this and this, okay. So I think I'm gonna have to turn down the opacity on this one just so I can see. Not quite. All right. That's, that's respectable there. And then turn up the opacity a bit. Don't tell me it was that easy. So this looks cut off a little. Let me turn this off. Hello, TRP. This is the, I should probably put it up on the screen, huh? Let me, let me do that. That, that will save a lot of people from being like, what's going on? So this is the, this is UGC 2885 Vera Rubin Galaxy. 
Um, Hubble Space Telescope. There we go. Um, and yeah, I am trying to align the, the bits. And like, it looks okay. It looks okay over here. It looks okay right there. Kind of looks a little wonky, but acceptable right there. So part of me is like, F it, let's leave it. So I am going to do another trim. So I'm gonna turn off the top right. Because I didn't move all of these at the same time. I'm probably going to have to do that. So that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So we're gonna take these two. actually going to how do I lock that I don't want it to move oh duh right there all right so lock position because we're moving these two And then we are going to take our handy dandy lasso tool and we're mostly going to cut this side chunk out because it is annoying me. Do, 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 do. I realized I forgot to put the music back on. Boom, just like that. And give me one second while I turn the music back on. And there we go. And yeah, this is this the galaxy was huge. It's, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Look at me using the wrong things in the wrong window. And then there's, because there's a tiny bit of black over here, as well as some noise from the other. So we're just going to cut the very edge of this off. And I had done some pretty rough cuts earlier. But because the images do overlap, it's not that big of a deal. Let's see if we can... No, I don't think I can get that too. I'll have to come back and do that one sec second. And then delete, delete, delete. a nice clean cut and then down here where this stuff is we really don't want this stuff so we'll just make a huge cut I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure why it is, but it's so far off of the thing that it's not going to matter that we cut it off. It really isn't, I think. If 
part of me is like, I should probably check to make sure everything is still where it needs to be. <laughs> All right, zoom out. All right, that's where that needs to be. That's pretty much where that needs to be. That's pretty much where that needs to be, okay. So now we're going to do top right, the middle layer. And that looks like it's okay. And that looks like, mm, mm, mm. So I did some scaling with uh, the left. So I might actually have to do that with this too. So I'll do edit, transform, scale. How many layers does each image have? Three. Um, there are three layers to each image. which is kind of annoying, but yeah. It is, it is kind of annoying. Okay, that actually looks like it's decently lined up over here and right here and there and there and there. All right, so we are going to lock the position of this one now that I know how to do that. And we're gonna unlock the posi position of this one. And let's see, we want the top layer. And what I'm doing right now is just aligning um, each layer's images with each other. And because I had done that one scale transform, let's see, I'm still working with the bottom right. So transform, we're gonna do transform again. And we're just gonna try to uh, line it up to where it is or where it should go. And that looks not the greatest. Oh, okay, here's, here's what I was using on the other is just these very faint lines. Let's see. That looks good here, here, here. And that looks okay there. So we're gonna lock the position of that. And this may be the very last bits we have to do for adjustment. And then I think we'll just do cleaning up and then figuring out what layer is essentially what. So we'll do uh, edit, transform again, because that's just really the most accurate way of making sure that I'm making the same kinds of edits, the same scale. And then got lucky, there's, it's probably hard to see, there's a streak here and a streak here. my mouse it just wants to click into place so that looks okay here looks okay along this line it looks okay here and here boom there we go so that was the so-called easy part um It's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be nearly as well done as like the professionals because I am not a professional in doing this. I really am not.
Um, I do okay. I do okay. Um, is the final image for personal use or does one submit it for study or both? The personal, the final image for me is going to be personal use. This has really mostly been a can I do this kind of uh, exercise. And the answer is yeah, I can. So there is that. I have a feeling that they process their image more than what I got because when you look at this, you see incredible detail here and then it just looks all weird and splunky here. I could take the rawest data and be like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to run it through Pyraph, but I'd rather not, quite frankly. I'd rather not. So I'm not going to worry about the jaggies or anything. So I'm going to open last week's. No, that's that's this one. I'm going to open last week's just so you guys can see. This one's a very subtle change, but I think it I think it's a, a good change. So I want to go ahead and save this and then get out notepad or something. You'd think I'd be a little more... Uh, we'll write on the back of, it, of an envelope. Oh wait, here's my note. Uh, here's my post-its. All right, so I got my post-its handy. I got a pen handy. And now we're going to open up Fitz Liberator because I don't know which filter was taken for each image. Wait for my mouse to quit freaking out. And I saved the file names. And the way that these are downloaded is D and E is that each like image gets put into its old fold its own folder. So it's a little weird. So we're gonna open the it fits. And this is what it looked like when it came down. Um, more or less. I did some things to make it do the thing and essentially this is not what I'm interested in. I am interested in the header data, which is not in the metadata. So I'm interested in the um, image headers. So each fits file has all of these uh, image headers. So I don't know what a lot of these are. Um, but this is what I care about is the photo mode because it has the camera, it has the device and it has the uh, filter. So that's what I'm interested in. So this one is F18 one, no F 814 wide and that's actually a pretty common filter <laughs> and so there are world coordinate stuff and I probably could if I used uh what is it what did I call it if I used Pyraph? Yeah, if I used Pyraph, I could do a whole bunch of stuff inside of Pyraph. But yeah, no. All right, so we're going to open a different file. So now we're going to do 5-0. This is going to be kind of boring to watch, but I think it's important. Ooh, turkey dogs. It sounds really good. Or some kind of meat thawing in the fridge. So this one is from uh, the F606 wide.
Yeah, I betting I bet hurting an average of six hundred people is is tiring. So this has gotta be like a cakewalk after that. And then here is so this is zero five zero six zero and then this is F four seventy five wide. Okay. Cake sounds amazing. All right, so that's one set of three. But wait, there's more. So we have six, zero, four, zero. See, they all had this weird no, just the two corners had this weird thing. And I bet you if this follows the same convention, this is also 814 wide. And I'm hoping the rest of them follow that same naming convention. But I don't trust that they do, so we're going to check every single one. 06, 050, and then this is 606. And then we have zero six zero six zero. Ha, huh, palindrome. And I bet you that one will be four seventy five. Come on. Yep. And again. <laughs> Okay. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <coughs> ha! Okay, and then this is zero seven zero four zero indeed eight fourteen. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and write down the other ones for this. And we're going to check them really quickly. It would be silly to change them, but again, I don't I don't trust. This is a trust but verify thing. Yep, 606. Cheerio precipitation. All right, you want to make it rain. Make it rain. Thank you, broken symmetry. Make it rain. All right. And then this should be 475. It is. Stick that one on the bottom of my monitor. All right, so now we have zero eight zero four zero and zero eight zero five zero and zero eight zero six zero. And those should be eight fourteen, six oh six, four seventy five. Okay. Again. We're gonna verify all this. And yep, 814. Six oh six. And four seventy five. Cool. Okay. 
can I save my bits for launch time? You can absolutely save your bits for launch time. In fact, the container is empty. I'd put it down on the floor for them to lick out, but it might get carried off to the outside and I don't feel like digging around in the snow for it. So, uh, yeah. All right, so cool, we're done with that. And we're just going to label these things. So instead of these uh, essentially incoherent labels, we're going to put uh, F475 wide. No, 470, not 570. Um, 550 is F606 wide. And 40 is F184 wide. And then F475 wide. No, nope, no, nope, cancel. And then this is F606 wide. F814 wide. Again, I know, boring, but kind of important. Uh, that's a good question. How far is this galaxy away? It is 232 million light years away. And it is 463,000 light years across, making it one of the largest known spiral galaxies. That's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. So here is the, here's the link right now. And, um, yeah. Oh my goodness, there are so many galaxies known to us and sometimes you just find galaxies when you're looking at other data. It is not uncommon to just find a galaxy that's in the way when you go and image something else. Um, the astronomers at um, Youngstown State University where I did my undergrad, they were doing um, imaging project because Dr. Durrell gets time on the Hubble occasionally when he wins a proposal and um, they typically get like it's not all the time but sometimes they get um, Sometimes you just get stuff in the foreground that nobody's seen before, like a small irregular galaxy. And that's what Dr. Feldmeyer and Dr. Durrell had done the one time. They um, were looking for something else entirely. And uh, there was just this galaxy in front of it. So sometimes it's literally just part of the image and you go, huh, I wonder what that object is. And you go to look it up and it, there's nothing there. So I don't know the details, but um, the university made it into this huge thing. And um, it's probably what I should have done. It was 814 wide. Um, and they're like, this is not that big of a deal. I thought we had the command merch. Oh, okay. Or that. I know Tinkerbell. All right, so we're gonna turn off that layer because we don't need that layer. Oh, that should not be a subgroup. That should be a group on its own. There we go. Nope, it still wants to be a group on its own. That's 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 not okay. 
Um, I wonder what happens if I drag it to the top. Excuse me while I get this ungrouped. How do I get it to not be part of a smart or part of a smaller group? Ungroup layers. All right. I know what we're going to do. We're just going to ungroup all the layers because we don't need these groups anymore. We really don't. I mean, pass through normal. Ungroup layers. Pardon me while I do this. Um, I'm just going to uh, co-host the official stream. So, yeah, um, yeah, Z uh, Zarina, it's, it's, discovering galaxies is, it's pretty cool. Nope, I want to un unlock all those. It's pretty cool, and it's actually kind of normal. Alright, so we want this to be 475. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. And then we want group 606. And this is how I wanted them to be grouped <laughs> in the beginning. Because I guess my goal is to... I'm not entirely too sure how I'm going to... Hey! Thanks for the, the gift sub. You're going to make me thanks. Um, do I believe in other forms of life? Like outside of our galaxy? I think there's part of me that's like there's this whole um like equation and this whole other thing and i'm like all right we're either in a simulation or we're not alone like the drake equation thank you paranor so statistically we can't be alone but here we are alone so um i think there's something out there otherwise because otherwise i'm like screw it we're in a simulation so uh i try not to talk about religion i try not to talk about religion because that, that can be a very touchy uh subject very quickly so Make it rain! Matrix confirmed. Yeah, I like that, Tommy. Um, yeah, it's... Merlin is like, every intelligent species looking at humanity turns instantly 180 degrees and goes the other way. I mean, that is one of the possibilities. There is an entire thing on that for it. So, let me group these objects... Group from layers, 814. Let's see how much time we have left. Got a little bit of time. Um, so let's go splunking on Wikipedia, shall we? So we want to look up the Drake's equation, right? Drake's equation. And... Um, So here's the Drake equation. Zoom that up, make sure it's big. So you have N is the number of civilizations in our galaxy with, with which communications might be possible, uh, which are on our current past light cone. And R star, R sub star, or ub star, sub asterisk, let's just use ub star of sub star the average rate of star formation in our galaxy uh p function f of p or is it p of f no f of p the fraction of those stars that have planets um 
and of E, the average number of planets that could potentially support life per star that has planets. F sub 1 is the fraction of planets which could support life that actually develop life at some point. F sub i, the fraction of planets which de with life that actually go on to develop intelligent life, civilization. Uh, F sub c, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space, like radio waves. L, uh, the length of time for which civilizations detect, detect, release detectable signals into space. So that's the Drake equation, and you essentially multiply all of these up, and um, keep in mind that anything that is like f sub, like f sub p, f sub 1, f sub i, f sub c are all fractions. So even if r is really, really big and um, n e is really, really big, like these fractions can make that really, really big number small. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and here is some estimates. This was used by the educated guests by uh, Drake and his colleagues in 1961. Um, gives the minimum numbers gives a minimum n of 20, and maximums like 50 million. So, yeah. Um, there's a whole bit of this. There's a whole bit of this. And um, and here somebody else was talking about uh, Sarah Seeger proposed a, and she proposed a revised equation that focuses on uh, search planets with biosignature gases rather than like radio waves. And um, here it's n equals n sub star times n, or f sub q times f sub hz times f sub zero times f sub l times f sub s. And n is the number of planets with detectable signs of life. n sub star is number of stars observed. f sub q is the fraction of stars that are quiet, meaning there's no activity. f sub hz is the fraction of stars with rocky planets in the habitable zone, which is like us. We are a rocky planet in the habitable zone. Uh, F sub O is the fraction of those planets that can be observed. F sub L is the fraction that have life. And F sub S is the fraction which produces detectable signature gas. So yeah. Um, yeah. And remember, like, this, this N sub star is probably a huge number. Everything else is a fraction. So she does stress that she's not throwing out the Drake equation. Um, you know, but essentially that we, there's more information now. We have more information now than we did when Drake came up with the equation. So yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and the Fermi paradox. That's what I was thinking about. So the Fermi paradox is a whole thing on its own. So let me just paste that in here. I know Tinkerbell. I know Tinkerbell. So it is essentially like this came up in a 1975 paper. So billions of stars in the Milky Way similar to the sun with high probability some of these stars have Earth-like planets. And if the Earth is typical, some may have already developed intelligent life. Some of these civilizations may have developed interstellar travel, a step that the Earth is investigating now. Even at the slow pace of currently envisioned interstellar travel, Milky Way galaxy could be completely traversed in a few million years. Since many of the stars similar to the Sun are billions of years older, this would seem to provide plenty of time. So, yeah. Yeah, and this is where uh, explanations for the paradox, you know, you have rare earth hypothesis, um, uh, no other intelligent species have arisen, intelligence alien species lack advanced tech 
lack advanced technologies. There's water world hypothesis. Um, it is the nature of intelligent life to destroy itself. Also great filter. It's the nature of intelligent life to destroy others. That's lovely. Periodic extinction by natural events. Um, intelligent civilizations are too far apart in space or time. Lack of resources to spread physically throughout the galaxy. Lack of desire to live on other planets. It's cheaper to transfer information for exploration. Human beings have not existed long enough. We're not listening properly. Civilizations detect or broadcast detectable radio signals for only a brief period of time. They tend to isolate themselves. Colonization is not the norm. Outcomes between all and nothing. They're too alien. Everyone is listening, but no one is transmitting. Earth is deliberately not contacted, which is the zoo hypothesis. Um, I am kind of amused by this. And uh, Earth is purposefully isolated, the planetarium hypothesis. And this is the uh, perceived universe's simulated reality. Um, so an idea related to the zoo hypothesis, literally our entire universe is just kept in a zoo or Earth is kept in a zoo, is that the perceived universe is a simulated reality. We are living in VR. Um, <laughs> That is sometimes, uh, that is sometimes how, just my default. Um, it is dangerous to communicate, which it might be. Um, they are here unacknowledged, which is US, UFO conspiracy theory. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello, Bill Nash. Veronica says, if VR, why so much pain? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I have that, that, you know. I have that feeling sometimes. Aliens are playing us like Sims. Yeah, there is that possibility. So there's also the wow signal. Um, strong narrow band radio signal received in 1977. Um, we still don't know what it's all about, but the wow signal was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Um, there's, I don't think we still know. I think we don't know. Uh, yeah, no, we still don't know exactly where it came from so but it uh didn't replicate which is kind of the weird thing see the two regions in space and the constellation sagittarius so we've narrowed it down but we don't know exactly where um we don't know exactly where so yeah um Things and stuff. Sims is 20 years old. Oh my goodness. It is, isn't it? I still remember buying a secondhand copy of The Sims. Veronica goes, yeah, yeah, pain is, is how you know you're still alive. Yeah, but it, it still sucks. Anyway. Um, yeah. So that was kind of a bummer note to end on. I didn't mean to end uh, end on a bummer note. Let's let's throw more uh, let's throw more Cheerios at the dogs as soon as I fix it because I think Tinker's even sitting. Let's throw more Cheerios at the dogs. All the Cheerios at the dogs. Oh. Okay, it's okay, Veronica. It's okay. It's it's not your fault. It's just, yeah, yeah. Broken Symmetry says Red Dwarf had an episode where their whole life experience was a game, and when they asked why it was so terrible, their reply was, "You were playing it wrong." Yeah, they got like one of the lowest scores too. And the iron the irony is is that they were under 
you know, I don't even care at this point because Red Dwarf is so old. Um, the irony of that episode is that they were actually, like, under some sort of mind control drug. Or mind control something. Um, that made them think that they were in a game. And that when they got out of the game, that life was just so miserable. And they're on the ship the entire time. So, oh yeah, they're totally loving the life, Tommy. Um, not gonna lie, I could throw Cheerios at them all day. The minute it is close to five o'clock, I'll be reminded that it's dinner time. Yeah, they're they're not gonna get a whole full dinner tonight. They're probably gonna get like a half of what they normally get simply because there's gonna be so many Cheerios today. All right, so let's talk about uh, Wayne Dribbly. Uh, the, yes, the Despair Squid. Thank you, Limprimble. Oh, they're releasing another series, Dwayne Dibley. Oh man, they made Cat look. Ah, oh, Cat was so upset. All right, so let's look at the launches that are happening tonight, shall we? Uh, saw Jill Tarter talk about the Wow signal and how it haunts her. Is there a video of that? Is there a video of that? Okay, so. They are going live. By they, I mean NASA is going live in two hours, or three hours, excuse me. NASA is going live three hours for the Ontario's launch. Um, which means that I will probably be here... No later than two and a half hours from now. Um, because I I want to set up rocket bingo and want to give time for people to filter in things of that nature. So um, okay, I'll open that up. I'll probably read it. Um. So, if she's at SETI, I wonder if we could get her to come on and chat. We have people at SETI. Um, we have people at SETI. I don't think we could, and, um, pay. Ask Bad Panda? Um... Hi, Spaceberry. Right now, you're supposed to be looking at my dogs. So, there. Have my dogs. Um, we, we hit a depressing note. Uh, Spaceberry, there is a launch in three hours. I am not going to stay live that entire time because I am starving and I need to grind up coffee. Uh, coffee beans. Um, the launch is in three hours. I was just saying that I will be back here live no later than two and a half hours from now. Um, and yes, the launch will be on YouTube. And um, I'll be co-streaming it here. So we can watch together. We can play bingo while we watch. Um, and if I start early enough... Um, oh no, because if I do, if I do Lego, then we don't have dog cam. If I start early enough, we might play, uh, I might play a game or something, so. Yeah, yeah, but, um, I am starving. So I am going to, uh, wrap it up here and call it a day. Y'all have been amazing. I will see you later today. I will see you in a couple hours. It's just, I, I need food. You know, food is good. So this has been a uh, production of PSI, that's Planetary Science Institute, working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown. I think the sun might be out. Ohio, uh, PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We're here because of people just like you. So thank you to everybody that's subscribed, that's, you know, thrown bits at the dogs. Bits at the dogs! Um, that's uh, pledged to be a patri 
pledged to be a patron on Patreon, bought merch, donated. Thank you for all of that. Really, thank you. Um, if you can't afford to do any of those things, that's a thousand percent okay. I understand it. I get it. Here are a few free ways that you can help support us. You can click that follow button here on Twitter so you can get, not on Twitter, on Twitch. We're not on Twitter. Duh. Anyways, you can click that follow button here on Twitch to get notifications of when we go live. We are typically live Sundays through Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern. Right now, that is 1800 hours UTC, along with, you know, rocket launches and stuff when they happen. Um, another free way to help us out is go to our YouTube channel and click subscribe because we archive just about everything from Twitch onto YouTube. And you can also tell your friends, families, and enemies about us. <gasps> Look, it's a subscription! Oh my goodness, for those that don't know what happens! <coughs> oh, they're so ready! They're so ready! Make it rain! Make it rain! Oh, another subscription! We're gonna make it rain for the dogs! They're so happy! They're so happy! Thank you guys so much! All the Cheerios! There's so many Cheerios in Puck's fur right now. He's gonna shake off later and find the Cheerios and make it sprinkle over here for Tinkerbell! That one went kind of far. I'm gonna end up stepping on that later. What? Another subscription? What? What is happening? Make it rain! I don't know what just happened because I don't have chat open, but thank you! What? What? What is happening? Make it rain! Oh my goodness! I, I, why do I feel like somebody just gifted subs? I did! Somebody did! Oh my goodness! Thank you so much, Bill Nash! I was like, what's happening? What's happening? So many Cheerios! So many Cheerios! And make it rain! This is what happens! Oh, thank you all! Enjoy your gift subs! Use all those emotes! I gotta fill up the Cheerio container again! Oh! Everybody's got those emotes! What is happening? So many alerts! My Cheerio jar is empty now. <laughs> Dogs ain't getting dinner tonight. <laughs> oh! So many Cheerios! So many Cheerios! Alright, where are we at? So that was Dad Joke Cinema. That was the last one. Alright! Thank you again so much, Bill Nash! And I even have the special Cheerios that are little hearts. Tiny, tiny. I just realized you can't see them very well because of my camera and light setup. But I have Cheerios that are teeny tiny little hearts. Oh, the dogs are so happy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, snacks for later. Everybody enjoy your new, uh, enjoy your new, um, Enjoy your new emote. I even got a new emote. Uh, yeah, y'all are awesome. So we are also members of the Knowledge Fellowship. So TKF. So there's a whole bunch of uh, other uh, educational streamers. And uh, wow, now I have Cheerio dust over everything. Everything. It was worth it. So thank you again. Thank you again, Bill Nash. All right. I was getting ready to roll the credits, wasn't I? I was. So. <laughs> Let me refresh that because the credits sure as heck probably didn't have all those subs on there. Cheerio, Cheerio dust is better than glitter. So. Did it pop up with everybody? I think it did, okay. Credits might take a minute today. They are going to take a minute, and that's okay. So, all right. Thank you again, everybody. Whee! I guess that's the best way to do that. And, um, yeah, I will see you all in about two and a half hours. 
And until then, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful insert time of day here. Keep being awesome, and I will see you all soon. Bye!